All right, so I did my introductory video on what energetic dissonance means. So I'm going to delve more into it um, using a lot of examples from my own life. So I have to give a lot of backstory about myself, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, it's all been good. So um, I grew up, I was born disabled. I had one leg extremely shorter than the other. They didn't know that... Um, they didn't know that until I was like seven or eight. Um, long story short, I grew up morbidly obese. So that weighed on the leg that was bad. So I had to get surgery, was wheelchair bound for a long time, didn't walk for a long time. I was morbidly, morbidly obese, probably up until like two years ago. So over that course of time, while I did have love for myself and love for my being and everything that I was doing, I had a lot of... I don't want to call it self-hate, but I did a lot of self-deprecating things. I did a lot of self-hating things. I didn't have that love for myself. So fast forward to when I started getting into healing and energy work. Um, I unfortunately realized that a lot of people around me benefited from me not feeling good about myself. Like, as long as I was being self-deprecating, as long as I didn't care, oh, you can have my money, I don't need it, I'm not going out, you need to go out and have fun, or letting a person take little digs at me because I low-key feel that way about myself, those kind of things are not okay, and that is where I really started learning about energetic dissonance, because as your vibration ascends, those people fall off. They don't know how to communicate with you anymore. And you don't want to communicate with them anymore. So, <clears throat> um, I've had a lot of huge instances of energetic dissonance. But um, it's been more of a happy process than a sad process. But you really think about it. You're like, wow, if I sit around hating myself and not liking myself and lowering my vibration, dimming my light, just so this other person feels comfortable or just so I can tiptoe around this other person, then you're doing such a disservice to yourself and the world. You know what I mean? And another part of energetic dissonance, I really want to get into, I want to open like a, a therapy business where I help people who experience energetic dissonance because sometimes... Everyone has to go out of your life. I'm experiencing that myself. Sometimes everyone has to go, you know, because every single person benefited from, okay, well, she doesn't feel that good about herself or she's not going to do this. She's not going to speak up because she doesn't feel that way about herself or she doesn't feel like she deserves to speak up, you know, and you just can't communicate with those people anymore. Now, a big um, way that this theme has been coming up in society and media um, is insecure with um, Issa Rae. She's such a wonderful creator. Everything she does is just lit. But that is a prime example of energetic dissonance. You have two people who used to get along. You have Issa. Let's just, let's just break this completely down. I'm about to psychologically read Molly. You have Issa here who started off this um, show in a long-term committed relationship. Yes, her partner had his problems, but she manifested and maintained that stability that Molly wants, that she's always been thirsty for, that long-term boyfriend that'll hold her down that's leading to marriage. Lawrence wanted to marry Issa. So you see Issa have all this stability with we got y'all, the job. She has the man that she's holding down. <clears throat> and she, most importantly, she can hold herself down. She doesn't have that insecurity of, am I enough? Am, is this enough? Like that's rooted deep inside of you from your childhood. And Issa does not have that. She has that security rooted inside of her. I don't know um, how she cultivated it because we don't know a lot of backstory about Issa yet, but she has that. That's the energy that she carries. She has a job. She has the man. She has the stability. He's holding her down. You know, he's staying. He's not fleeting. He's there, committed, ready to stay. And then, you know, 
then you have molly um linguist she's a she speaks fluent spanish lawyer brilliant lawyer beautiful financially affluent comes from a good family two-parent household but she is deeply insecure about something that we don't know about yet she has this thing inside of her this mechanism inside of her that cannot manifest stability she can't attract that stability she can't manifest stability so she's always been able to take little digs at Issa or look down I don't I hate to say that because they do have a good friendship but she's always had that ability to look down on Issa when she has those little mishaps where she needs a favor, a professional favor, or where, you know, she messes up in something post online that she didn't intend to. But Molly doesn't have, like, that stability inside, so she's able to make those little digs at Issa. That's how she looks at Issa. Well, I have all of this. I'm stable with this, and at least I'm stable with this and Issa's not stable with that professionally. She uses her professional gains and her financial gains as a way to, to look down on Issa. While she's really jealous of Issa because Molly cannot attract and maintain that long-term inner stability and security that she longs for, you know, because she is ganking she's begging for stability and security out of every man and when you have that thirsty desperate i gotta have it it has to happen now energy nothing can come to you i mean look at her and she goes after people who are unavailable and expects things out of them that they can't even give dro a married man she felt secure in fucking him in a bathroom while his wife was at the table that's how she felt secure that that insecurity is deep inside of her you know and then uh, what else did molly do and she's just so jealous and insecure on the inside and that's okay the show is called insecure but that energetic dissonance that you're seeing between molly and Issa happens all of the time you know you can no longer look down on me, so we can no longer be friends. That's Molly's problem. Issa has done nothing wrong. Molly's mad because Issa continues to attract stability and security. Yes, she was homeless for a minute, but she got on her feet. She started Ubering. She got the apartment where they gave her a place to live if she manages the facility. She was able to also pull off the block party, you know, able to keep her car, able to feed herself. You know, she's had men who have wanted to reach out and take care of her in her times of need. Where you have Molly, she's constantly finding excuses to be insecure out of people who can give her stability. The bisexual guy, and I put it in quotation marks because... She didn't even know him long enough to find out what the real deal was. But he was able to offer her stability. He had the job. He They were sexually compatible. But she found that one thing that was wrong. Because Molly believes on the inside. I do not deserve to be secure. I deserve to be insecure. So what we're seeing right now between Molly and Issa is just a prime example of energetic dissonance and how... If you have people in your life who low-key do not like you, low-key are hating on you and want what you have, once you start ascending and realizing, hey, I actually deserve all this great stuff that I attract, then those people no longer can have a place in your life. You'll constantly bump heads over stuff you shouldn't even bump heads over, you know? You see Molly, um, you see Molly and Issa just fighting over little things, not being honest with one another. You know, like, for example, for this season, we see Molly gassing up her relationship with Andrew. She's sitting there like, oh, yeah, my man, he always, my man, this and that. You know, you see her constantly gassing that up. Meanwhile, stuff isn't even really like that. She's just trying to compete with Issa. I can have a stable relationship where my man supports me. I can have a man holding me down. Her gassing up her relationship like that is evidence that it's not, she's not secure. She can never be secure until she fixes whatever that is on the inside. Because when you really got it, when you're really locked down, when you're really being held down, you don't have to talk about it. You radiate that energy. You know what I mean? So... 
energetic dissonance. You know, Molly no longer has a place in Issa's life anymore because she's been hating on her the whole time. She's disliked her the whole time. You know what I mean? Because you just look at the things that she said to Issa. Issa said, okay, Molly, you're miserable. Okay, well, has Molly showed true happiness? You have the job. You've had men. You, you have the apartment. You have the money. But you're miserable. You've met people who have wanted to offer you commitment and stability. But you've repelled them because you're miserable. But she called Issa a user because she feels used because I'm getting I'm getting somewhere. Molly Molly called Issa a user because she feels used because Issa has things that Molly does not have. So she feels used when Issa hasn't used her for anything at all. She just feels like you have more than what I have and you're doing more with little. So we have a problem so they can no longer bang i mean probably over these next few episodes we'll see a reconciliation i don't know but i've seen that time and time again time and time and time again i've watched two friends be friends and they don't really like each other i've seen groups of people not really like each other and then it eventually falls apart and it always falls apart. But what I hate to see is when it falls back together. Because it's just like, this person doesn't really like you. Like, they don't really like you. Why are you hanging out with this person? Um, But I believe Issa is better than that. And she'll try to see Molly's damage as a way to circumvent whatever has happened. That's just a guess. I don't know. But um, I really wanted to talk about energetic dissonance in relation to what we're seeing on that show because it's doing an excellent job at showing a friendship breakdown when your vibrations change. Issa is on the come up. She's networking, forging connections, making a name for herself in the community. Her career is taking off doing something that she wants to do, that she loves doing. And Molly hates it because Issa's adding another thing to her life that she loves. Meanwhile, Molly is miserable and continues to find thing after thing after thing about her life that she hates. So, energetic dissonance one-on-one. -on -one. I really want to not only open like a therapy unit to help people deal with energetic dissonance, whether it be online or in person, but also send out tips tell you it's okay you will eventually attract people who like you for you not that you're that you who loves you because it's a lot you know I had um I knew someone for a long time and realized a lot about them you know what I mean so it's personal lessons it's what I'm seeing in society and it's a way that I want to help people because Life doesn't have to be that way. You can be surrounded by people who love you. Go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. And this is for Issa. You got this girl and we got you.